Hi everyone, today I want to talk about the deriving via extension. So this was a, a request that I saw come in uh, uh, through Twitter a few weeks ago about you know what, what would be fun topics uh, that, that we should explore. So, so this is what, I, what we're going to explore today. So deriving via is a relatively new extension to GHC that allows us to sort of automatically generate instances as long as those instance class instances look like the instance for some other data type. So, so let's let's work out an example of, of when we want to do this. So our, our sort of key example here is um, it, it, we're going to make a data type here, um, you know, I'll call it danger level. Um, and a danger level can be a, one of a bunch of different things. Maybe everything is OK. Um, maybe, you know, uh, uh, not great. Uh, maybe the danger level is, you know, uh-oh. Uh, uh, maybe real problem here. And then maybe we have catastrophe. Can I spell catastrophe? Yes, I think I can. OK, so there we have danger level. Good. Um, and now, you know, maybe there's lots of different dangers that could be coming from different directions. And so I want to be able to combine different danger levels, right? If I know that something is all OK, and but that is there, uh-oh, that's still an uh-oh situation, right? So what we really want to do is we want to have a monoid um, here that can sort of combine different um, uh, different danger levels to sort of say the maximum danger level. So we can write a semigroup and a monoid instance. Uh, let's, the semigroup is going to be the interesting one. So instance semigroup danger level where, well, so now we need to write this combining operation. So catastrophe overrides everything else. So I can say catastrophe and combined with anything else is a catastrophe. Uh, good so far. Um, I could say that real problem here combined with catastrophe is a catastrophe. But otherwise, real problem here combined with anything else, that's just a real problem here. Um, and we could keep doing this. Uh, a, a better way to do this, though, this is this is a bit boring, right? Is to realize, oh, I've written all of these constructors in order. And so if I just have an ORD instance, then this is going to be a lot easier. So instead of writing out all of this, um, the semigroup instance, I'm going to write deriving ORD. Um, and let's get rid of this. And right away, I think we'll have a problem, right? We can't just derive ORD because we have no instance for each. So let's derive eek and ORD. OK, now so far so good. So now I can do instance semigroup danger level um, where, well, this combining function, that's just max. Um, so that's very convenient right there. So now I can I can I can do that, and then I can say instance uh, monoid danger level, where uh, well we need to define for monoid we need to define mempty. Well, what's the thing that doesn't really have any danger? That's all okay. Um, and so now I have my my monoid and my semigroup instances for danger level, and I can go off and use this. Let's now say I have a movie collection. And in my movie collection, I want to include the ratings uh, or uh, the ratings of all the different movies. And maybe I want to choose subsets of these movies. And I want to figure out what is the rating of a subset. Well, if I want my daughter to be to watch these movies, if I want to know whether that's appropriate, I have to choose the maximum um, sort of rating of all of them. So I might have uh, data movie rating here. And then in, in America, we have G and PG and PG-13 and then R. And there's maybe a few others beyond that. We don't need to go there. Um, so these are all the different movie ratings. And again, I want to have a very similar situation. So I want to have here, I can say deriving eek ord. And then I can say instance semigroup um, movie rating where, well, again, we're going to have the combining operations going to be max. And then we have instance monoid movie rating where mempty is going to be G. Um, and, and this is still all well and good. But, but now there's, there's clearly a pattern here, right? And it would be nice to be able to abstract over the pattern and just be able to say, I want to be able to define very quickly and very easily semigroup and monoid instances over data types that meet certain uh, specifications that just chooses the maximum. And I want to be able to just wrap that up and give it a name. And then I can use deriving via to automatically write these instances for me. So that's what we're, really what we're going to do. Um, so the way that we do that with deriving via is we actually define a new type. And, and it's important that it's a new type. So we'll, we'll come back to why in a few minutes. Uh, but I'm going to 
make a new type. I'm going to call it supremum, um, sort of a fancy word for maximum. And all supremum is going to be is just a simple wrapper over some type A. Um, right? So a supremum A is really just the same as, as A at runtime. Um, but now, now that I have this new type, I can define instances on that new type. And then we'll see how we can derive the other specific instances for danger level and movie rating from supremum. So if I say instance, let's say we need semigroup of supremum A, and what's its semigroup going to be? Well, it's going to be max. Of course, that's not going to work because we don't have an ORD instance for supremum. Um, so I want to still say deriving eek ORD here. And now, oh, no instance for ORD. I haven't said that. I have to add it as, a, as an instance constraint here. That's not really a surprise. OK, so now I've defined this. And then I can also define a monoid of supremum A. Well, what's going to be Memti? What is going to be the neutral element uh, for max? Well, it's the minimum element of the, um, of the data type. So here, not only do I need um, uh, Ord, but I'm also going to need bounded because I want I, I need to get the minimum element of the whole data type. So I'm going to say memty is min bound, and we're going to complain that we don't have oh let's see we don't have the ord a constraint, but now we also don't have bounded supremum a. So we're going to do deriving bounded up here. Um, could not de deduce bounded a. Oh well uh, oh no that's that's good because I want it down here. Hooray. OK, so now I've defined what the semigroup and monoid instances should be for supremum. But how do I relate that back to danger level and movie rating? Well, it turns out I can go down here. And now all I have to say is deriving um, semigroup and monoid via supremum danger level. Um, and it is fun to be able to say supremum danger level. So let's try that. And I can get rid of these handwritten instances. And oh, illegal use of, um, of blah, blah, blah. Use deriving strategies to allow this. So let's turn on deriving strategies. Whoops, there we go. OK, now we, need to, we have a specific deriving strategy. So let's turn on deriving via. Um, and no instance for bounded. Oh, good, that's right. There is no instance for bounded. So let's add a bounded instance. Hooray, now everything is working. So let me just prove to you that this actually works the way that we want it to. Um, so to do that, I'm going to be able to have to show these things. So if I combine uh-oh with real problem here, we get a real problem here. If I combine not great with catastrophe, we get a catastrophe. Um, and oh, yes, this is, I hope, Commutative. Yes, good. Um, so here, very quickly, just by saying via supremum danger level, we were able to do what we wanted. Um, so let's unpack exactly what's going on here. So when we say deriving via, what we're going to do is we take all of the methods of each individual class. So we do this one at a time. So let's just look at semigroup. We can take all the methods of semigroup, just this combining operation, and we're going to coerce the implementation of that method from whatever type we have here. So in other words, it's kind of like saying that we're writing an instance. I'll do this in comments. It's kind of like saying we're writing an instance semigroup, um, what is it, danger level, where this equals coerce of this thing at supremum danger level. So what, what is this funny notation that I'm writing here? So this is a visible type application. It's enabled by the type applications extension. And it's saying that, well, if I write this combining operation, what type do I want that to work at? I would specifically want it to be the version on Supremum. So then the next question is, does this coerce work? So coerce is we can import it from data.coerce. And this is all about roles and coercible. Uh, I think we'll have another video coming up fairly soon about that stuff. Um, but the idea here is that as long as the relationship between this type here and this type up here is just a difference of new types, there's nothing else going on. There's just some new type insertion or maybe removal somewhere. That means that we can coerce the function from one, from one type to another. In our case, supremum danger level 
is just a new type wrapper around danger level. So it's exactly this new typey relationship that we want, right? New type, uh, supremum danger level is the same thing as danger level modulo new types. And so that means I can coerce the implementation of the combining operation from supremum danger level to just danger level. And that's exactly what I want because I want this implementation here, not some other implementation, but this one here. And that's what deriving via will do for me. Um, so I don't need to write this. Let me get rid of that because it works already using this deriving via. Um, I'm going to take one small step back. I had to enable deriving strategies. This allows us to say what technique GHC should use when, when deriving a class instance. Um, so we can actually do this for all of our deriving clauses. It's something I actually like doing because it makes it things a little bit more explicit. So here, when I say deriving eek or bounded and show, I want to use stock instances for these. Um, what, I, what I mean by stock here, that's the, the, the sort of keyword within Haskell that says, use the normal way of getting one of these instances. And these, is, it, these particular classes are all built in and part of the Haskell report. And so we have a stock method for building instances. Um, so that still works. Of course, I can do the same thing for my movie rating. So let's add stock instances for eek, ord, and bounded. And then now I can say deriving semigroup, oops, and monoid via supremum uh, movie rating. And there we have it, I think, hopefully. What's going on here? Yes, yes, there we have it. Good. Um, so there's one more small trick. This, this is nicely composable. So let's say I have yet another type here. Um, let's say I'm imagining to, um, uh, I'm, I'm gathering data on the altitude of different places on a property. And I want to know at what level I have to start worrying about floods. And that means that wherever the lowest point on my property, that's my flood level concern. So I'm going to make a new type called flood level here. And we'll call it mookfl. And it's just going to be a new type wrapper around int, where this int represents some sort of altitude measurement. Um, but now I can say that I want to derive my semigroup and monoid instance here, not via the maximum, but via the minimum. And so I can say that by saying via uh, not supremum of flood level, but supremum of down of flood level. So I'm sure we're going to get a bunch of errors. So let's go solve them, and then I'll explain a little bit more. So first off, we need to have down in scope. So this we can get from data.org. So down is actually a new type wrapper that flips the orientation of both ord instances and bounded instances. Um, so now we're going to get other errors, no instance for ord of flood level. Well, that's because I need to derive new type ord, and I'm sure I'm going to need eek in just a moment. Um, and then, uh, let's see, can't make a derived instance of eek flood level. I need generalized new type deriving. So you might have noticed I sneakily put in the word new type here. That's another deriving strategy. So there's stock, there's new type, there's via, and then there's, um, uh, there's any which is, I think it's any class is the keyword. And that just means we, we, we don't write in any um, implementations for methods. I don't think it's actually very useful in the end. Um, so we can write generalized new type deriving here. Oh, and now there's still errors, no instance for bounded. Well, that makes sense. We need to add a bounded instance here. So now I've made this new type flood level. Let's see, does it work? Um, and I'm gonna write show here. Um, so we can see. So if I say mookfl of 19 combined with mookfl of 33, I want the 19 out. Now, interestingly, we just see plain old 19, not mookfl 19. And that's because I use the new type deriving method for show. Um, actually, often, I don't want a new type deriving show. I want to use a stock show. So we still see the mookfl constructor. So now if I change this and then rerun this, now I see mookfl19 because I'm using the stock method of deriving show that actually uses the constructor names as opposed to new type deriving show, um, which will just take the show um, instance and make it work exactly like it does for int. Um, and here it works because of this down. And so we can sort of slide that in here and then be able to build up the, these, this idea of um, of these auto-derived instances uh, bit by bit. One last piece I want to share with you is that I use new type deriving down here. New type deriving is actually just a small specialization of deriving via. Instead of using new type, I could have just as well said via int. 
right? Because int is the same as flood level modulo new type wrapping and unwrapping. So actually, whenever we use new type deriving, it's the same thing as via deriving, where the type after the via is the representation type of the new type. So let's see, does this actually work? It does. Um, okay, so I hope this has been interesting. Deriving via is a very powerful extension that allows us to do to get rid of lots of boilerplate code and put an idea of an instance just in one place instead of having to repeat it in many different places. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.